From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. As always, we have some very serious headlines for you. And this first one's very, very dear to my heart because it just happened a few hours ago. Massive hunt underway for gunmen in Paris terror attack. Oh my, oh my, we're going to be discussing that. Terrorism seems to be everywhere, doesn't it, friends? Going on, Europe's empty churches go on sale. I can't believe it, yes? I can believe it, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. New issue of Jihadist magazine suggests attacks on the United States. I never thought that I would ever, ever read anything like that. But before we get into all of these serious headlines, I just want to say, as we progress into the new year, I pray that each of you personally and collectively as families will have the blessing of the Lord upon your lives and that uh, our nation somehow will be brought much closer to the Lord than it has been in many, many years. But uh, we want to begin with this first headline, and it has to do with what happened, as I mentioned a moment ago, a few hours ago. Take a look at this, if you will, from the Wall Street Journal. Charlie Hebdo, office in Paris, attack by gunmen, 12 killed. Oh, my. And the massive hunt underway for gunmen in Paris terror attack. Now, you know, the attackers were heard shouting, Allahu Akbar. Well, of course, that's an Islamic phrase that means God is great. French Europe radio said one also shouted that the prophet was avenged. Well, you know, I am going to go to Jack right now because this just boggles my mind. It seems like terrorism is everywhere right now, and we see it right there in Paris, getting closer to home. Yes, Jack? Oh, Rexana is getting so close to the attacks happening in America. It's going to be global. We're in trouble, ladies and gentlemen, as the final sign before Christ returns. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it in Noah's day? The whole world filled with violence and terrorism. Genesis 6, 11. And what they just did there in France as they went into that office that printed a magazine of satirical things making fun, and they warned the, the fellow once, don't ever do it again of making fun of our prophet Muhammad. Well, they had another little article a number of months later, and so they went in as a group and shot and killed 12 people. Now, I'm going to say something from my heart to every listening Muslim. I will not burn your Quran, nor will I make fun of your God or your prophet. But I'm telling you why I'm mad. Because you can say every rotten thing about my Jesus, and I'm not allowed to defend him. But I'm going to. I won't bother your stuff. But you better leave my Jesus alone, because I won't stand for it. I'm going to preach what the Word of God preaches. Amen. Well, as long as we stick with the Word of God, we'll know who Jesus really is. Jesus is the Son of God, Savior of the world, and I'm so glad I've opened my heart to him. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But uh, Jack, you wanted to say a word about some of the things we're going to be talking about uh, coming up in the next few weeks. It's strange how God's Spirit leads me. I have been planning to deal with the apostasy going on within Christendom right now, and all the killing that's coming because of it. And here this morning, it's already started in France but it's just everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got something here. They call a religion of peace, the war on Christians. 
There's 300 headlines where these Muslims have gone in and slaughtered Christians like you can't believe. 300 churches closed in Iraq and thousands and tens of thousands of Christians killed. A religion of peace, come on. Let me go on. The first week I'm going to talk about our translators, Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontiers. They have apostatized, and I want to get a letter writing campaign going because of what they've done. They've made a version of our Bible for the Muslim world and removed that Jesus is the Son of God 91 times. Why? Because Allah eight times says, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you'll burn in hell forever. So they said, we want to please them. We'll take out 91 texts talking about this, and perhaps we can win them through that. How do you win them to a Jesus who is not the Son of God? You've destroyed the Trinity. You've destroyed the gospel message. You've destroyed the plan of salvation. You've destroyed His resurrection and His coming in. Everything. Now, listen to me as I practice God's Word, the commandment from God. Ephesians 4, 26, be you angry and sin not, and I'm mad. I'm mad at the devil and the devil's crowd. The devil's crowd, yes. These translators were great Christian leaders for many years, and now they've gone back on God, and I'm going to call them what God calls them in 1 John 2, 22, whosoever denies that Jesus is the Son of God is an Antichrist, and that's what you guys are going to be called for the rest of the program. And I pray that the people of America and the world, for this goes to all 247 nations, will hear it and begin to do what they did in Pakistan. They said, too many of our people have died here as Christians by the Muslims because of this very thing. We believed in the Son of God, and we're not ready to change our Bibles. Thank you for godly Christians. But it's going on everywhere now. They have these Bibles in the hands of these people in the Muslim nations. And God help us, as you're going to see, it's the doctrine of Antichrist. Antichrist shall come. And he says, Let no man deceive you, for that day Christ's return shall not happen until there come a great apostasia, a falling away from the faith. And Wycliffe and this crowd has started it. And now next week I'm going to deal with some of the ministers in this country. They've gone berserk. I wonder if they're really saved. And the things they're saying about our Christ, in fact, I started this ministry 67 years ago, and I could preach anything, and everyone said, Amen, they were behind it. And now it's being torn to shreds. And now we hear that the evangelicals, 50% of them say, there are other ways to heaven besides Jesus. Well, then you're a blasphemer and an antichrist as well. Why? Jesus said in John 8, 24, You die in your sins if you believe not. I am He, the Savior of the world, 1 John 4, 14. He again said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can come unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way. And Luke said in Acts 4, 12, Neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven. Give it among men, whereby you must be saved, and that name is Jesus. And I love that name. And you evangelicals better turn around, or you'll be in hell forever. Oh, my, oh, my, Jack. That is so very strong, but it's very, very biblical, isn't it, friends? I am so burdened about something that you're going to see on the screen right now. And this is something that we need to be praying about for our own country. But before we consider the United States, let's take a look. This is the result? Yes, at what's happening in Europe. Europe's empty churches go on sale. Well, when Jack and I were in Europe the last time visiting his relatives in Belgium, they were all empty. We would visit the churches. They were all empty. And here you see it. Empty church buildings increasingly mark the countryside from Britain to Denmark. The Church of England closes about 20 churches a year. Roughly 200 Danish churches have been deemed non-viable and underused. The Roman Catholic Church in Germany has shut about 515 churches in the past decade. 
but it is in the Netherlands where the trend appears to be most advanced. The country's Roman Catholic leaders estimate that two-thirds of their 1,600 churches will be out of commission in a decade, and 700 of Holland's Protestant churches are expected to close within four years. Oh, friends, my heart is so burdened about this. That's where the churches are going. And I want to ask Jack, is this going to continue? Will it happen right here in the United States, It's going Jack? to continue. It's going to get worse because this is the sign that Jesus is coming. And I repeat what I said a few moments ago. You will know when my coming is right about to happen because of this great falling away, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and apostasia. And man, they're talking everything against Jesus. Now, listen, the third week, I'm going to do something what the Pope has just done. He's called in 24 new cardinals. He's got a purpose behind it all. And I'm showing these all the final signs. I'm telling you, we're the generation. There's no doubt about it. And you know what God's called me to do? To warn you. When you see the sword coming upon the land, and you know who has the sword, Islam, warn my people. Ezekiel 33, 3. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and warn my people. Isaiah 58, 1. What do we warn them about? But this creeping apostasy by antichrists within Christendom, within Protestantism, within Catholicism. It's everywhere. Now, what's the warning? 2 Peter 2, 1. There are false prophets among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, secretly shall bring in damnable heresies. There are two things in that verse, false prophets and damnable heresies. That's the beginning of my title because it's awfully strong. You see where they get it. I got it from the Holy Spirit who wrote this book. Now here's what's going on as we complete the title of my new video. And that's 1 Timothy 4.1. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly, plainly, that in the latter days some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And some of you translators have been mixed up with these seducing spirits producing the doctrine of demons, that Jesus is not the Son of God. Hear it again in Jude, verse 3. We are to earnestly contend for the faith, once and for all, delivered to the saints. For there are certain men crept in among you, ungodly men, who have turned the grace of God into lasciviousness and have denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's you, Bible translators. What does God call it? The doctrine of antichrist produced by demons. Remember 1 John 2, 22? And we're going to get into these doctrines in a moment. Oh, Jack, you have really been promoting some very serious thinking here by talking about false prophets. Do you ever think you would hear about false prophets in the day and age in which we are living? Well, it does bring me to our brand new offer. And my, oh my, what an offer it is. Beware, false Prophets, take a look, please, at the new commercial. Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrists, and super deceivers, like Judas, who for the almighty dollar delivered Christ to the enemies of the gospel. That hour has arrived. Bible translators remove 91 verses claiming Christ is the Son of God from the Holy Bible for decadent versions created for Muslims. Does it matter? Shockingly so. Why? Christianity's foundation and major theological voids have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. This same group of blasphemers have obliterated the major Bible doctrines for salvation, including the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his sacrificial blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his second coming. 
Who are these Judas Iscariots? Have they committed the unpardonable sin against Christ and the Holy Spirit? Order Dr. Van Empey's shocking video, Beware False Prophets, Damnable Heresies, and Doctrines of Demons, and find out. Oh my, there's the 800 number and there's the address. Don't put it off our very first week for this offer. And my oh my, Jack's also going to be enclosing some new information with your order, Jack. It's going to be a free gift, another video, and it took place at the Washington Cathedral where they got the Muslims and Christians together for a prayer meeting. And you must look at that first before you even begin to see this. And that is a free gift with this. Oh, yes, we're going to be enclosing two it for weeks. only two weeks. Whoa, so there's the 800 number and there's the address. So please, please call right away. You know, we don't want to be deceived, do we? We need to know who these Judas Iscariots are so we can recognize them all in here, all about what's happening in the world today, in the churches. And I'm going to be going on here in the churches, some of them being closed over there in Europe and probably here in the United States soon. And something that has been going on now for a while, we know we've been talking about it, Chrislam. And that is where the emphasis is on claiming that Jesus is not the Son of God. They're combining Christianity and Islam. And there you see Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, yes. And here we are. Wycliffe depends changing titles for God. Now they did change Matthew 28, 19 from this, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to this, cleanse them by water in the name of Allah, his Messiah, and his Holy Spirit. Going on. The Quran anathemizes, curses, and damns anyone daring to say that Jesus is a son of God. Now, you know what? If you're a Muslim and you're peace-loving, take a look at this, will you please? When they do, it is guaranteed that they will go to hell. Now, the Quran teaches this in Surah 4, 165, Surah 518, Surah 6, 101, and 930, 17, 111, 1938, 2391, and 88, 92. What does it teach? that you are damned if you say that Jesus is the Son of God and you will go to hell. Now, I know there are some peace-loving Muslims. Did you know that's in your Quran? You need to stand up and say, hey, I'm not going to believe this. Right, Jack? Great. Now, the plan of salvation, five points that fundamentalism created in 1910. And it didn't matter what denomination you were, if you believed these five things, you knew the Lord, and they said, we're brothers and sisters in the faith, we'll go and meet together in heaven one day. It was the eternal deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the blood atonement for salvation, the bodily resurrection, and his coming again. All five of those have been wiped out because of these Bible translators, Antichrist. First of all, Christ was eternal. He didn't begin in Bethlehem's manger. First Peter 1.20 says that Christ was foreordained before the foundation of the world, before the world was created. And Revelation 13.8 says Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. He was there. He upped in creation, Proverbs 30, verse 4 who hath established all the ends of the earth. What's God's name? What's his son's name? 6,000 years ago, he was already a son. That's great, isn't it? And the plan was laid. Jesus, you will go and die for sinners because without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, and you'll take that body and shed that blood. And so he came through the Virgin Mary. Now get it, Galatians 4, 4, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son. No doubt about that. And they can't find that in a Muslim Bible because of you translators. Mary said in Luke 1, 34, how shall this be? I know it on a man. The angel answered and said unto her, the power of the Holy Ghost shall come over thee, and that which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Hallelujah, Excellent. You can't miss it. Amen. 
listen, if he's not the son of God, he wasted his time on that cross, and the Muslims would be right. And that's why you took it out of the Bible. But you can't get to heaven without the son of God. That's who Jesus is. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through his son they might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not on him, the son, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Verse 36. Now, let's go to 1 John 5, 11 to 13. Five times in these few verses, he's the Son of God. This is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son doth not have life. These things have I written unto you to believe in the Son of God, that you may know, not hope so, think so, guess so, know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Five times in a few verses. We could go on and on and on. His resurrection. You've done away with that. Why? Because Romans 1, 4 said, Christ is become the Son of God by the Holy Spirit. His pronunciation. Through the resurrection from the dead, and he's coming again. For Yahweh God in heaven says, I will set my king upon the holy hill of Jerusalem. And on the morning of the coming of Christ through the Virgin Mary, the angel Gabriel said to her in Luke 1, 32 and 33, your son shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest God. And he shall sit upon David's throne in Jerusalem and reign forever and forever as the son of God. And it's not going to be Allah or Muhammad it will be Jesus who's honored, Philippians 2.10, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and he's the Son of God. Wycliffe. Yes, he's the Son of God, and I think you understand now why we cannot combine Christianity and Islam. One thing that uh, certainly we've, our attention has been brought to, how, according to the Quran, they do approve of terrorism, according to what happened in France just lately. Well, take a look at this. First of all, the leader of the Islamic State, Baghdadi, and then going on, ISIS to annex more Arab lands into caliphate. Iranian envoy warns of ISIL threat to entire region. And, oh, this breaks my heart, Christians on verge of extinction in Iraq. And then Taliban massacre students, I'll never forget what happened there in Pakistan. 126 children killed, more than 141 killed. Bullets in their heads. Yes, and Islamic State executes 100 foreigner uh, deserters. Now, these are some who came from different countries saying, we want to join you, but they didn't want to stay there. They want to go back home. And in Syria, they are going to execute them if they leave. None pleads for Christians raped, sold, killed by ISIS. And Christians under ISIS boot cry out, ah. Oh. And then ISIS reportedly turning churches, ah, huh? into torture chambers? Going on. Death penalty for smuggling Bibles at Saudi Arabia. Get ready for Muslim invasion of the United States. New issue of Jihadist magazine suggests attacks on the United States. ISIS hacks U.S. news site. We are already here. Texas facing clear and present threat from ISIS. One last one. FBI bulletin warns of possible ISIS terror plot in Memphis, in Memphis. Let me deal oh, with that yes. one, Rick Sala. I will. We reported this a week ago. The minister there who followed Adrian Rogers, a church where I preached, has 30,000. He said on CBN, he said, we now have hired 100 men 
because we have 30,000 members on Sunday and they're coming with their guns to keep our people safe. And I'll tell you, I believe what, what they're doing. We ought to all prepare in our churches, but some of you guys aren't warning your people. Here are two, 300 headlines of all the Christians they've killed in the last 18 months. God help America. And believe what Jesus said in Luke 22, 36. And if you don't have a sword to protect yourself, sell your clothes and buy one. Oh, Jack, you know, right now I am going to open the door to you to say that there is an uplook, something good coming out of this. Because when Jesus said, when you see all of this, including terrorism, that's when I'm coming back. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But are you ready? Have you opened your heart to Jesus, the Savior of the world? Will you please accept him as your Savior? As Jack prays the prayer right now. I'm going to Jack. be brief, but repeat it after me. Jesus, we love you. And we don't believe what these translators have said about you. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, shedding that precious blood for all of us. Today, I'm grateful. I love you, Jesus. And I'm asking you to come into my heart and take away every sin. Wash me clean today. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Did you pray the prayer? You just became God's child, forgiven of all your sins. And now I just want to say, if you'll write to me, there's my address. I'll send you this little booklet. First steps in a new direction. The Lord not only forgave you, but he wants to walk with you today and give you peace in a troubled world. Please write to me. I'll send you this wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You know, I am so happy with that we can bring our program to a close like this because it's the up look. It's a joyful look. Jesus is coming back. He's going to set everything straight that's going wrong today. So please write and let me know you accepted the Lord. And now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our brand new offer, Beware False Prophets. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Beware False Prophets. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. There's the counter number and there's the address. Don't put it off. If you ever needed to have one of our teaching videos, this is it. So make the call. We'll get it in the mail. Beware false prophets as soon as we hear from you. And now I just want to say, do you ever feel unloved? I want to assure you of something that really is true. Everyone is valuable to God. We we'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very much. Bye-bye.